welcome to Dystopian Electronics Workshop. Today, we're going to take a look at a couple of vape pins that I picked up, pull the batteries out of them, and try to use them to power up this point-and-shoot camera. Every year, more than 20 tons of electronics are thrown away. At Dystopian Electronics Workshop, we harvest this waste stream to build cool experiments and upgrade our workshop. Before we get started, I wanted to give a quick shout out. My buddy KJ made me some really cool artwork. I just wanted to throw up a couple of examples. Here's one right here. Put the Dew logo there in the sky. Just thought that was pretty cool. And here's my personal favorite, little kind of Dew shadows. So I just want to say thanks to KJ. I'll put a link to his social media in the comments below. Looks like I may have a comment Hey, Mimikins says hi. Hi, Mimikins. Welcome to the stream. Thank you very much. And now let's get started taking a look at this first vape. Now, I have two of these here. The first one, this ghost, I actually went ahead. You can see there is nothing in it. I live in a state where these are not legal because as you can see, this is a THC pin. So uh, I went ahead and pulled the THC element out of it before I got home, but it does still have the battery inside. So I'm gonna grab my spudger and really quickly, we'll just pop this guy open. Just like that, we can pull out the battery. Got our charging circuit here at the end. It's a micro USB charging circuit. And got a 31.3 watt hour 220502 lithium battery. So we'll go ahead and set that aside. And we'll go ahead and open up this next pin. Now, this one here. As a number, does it have anything? I guess it's just got a logo. I'll have to look that logo up and see what brand this one is. But we should be able to just pop the mouthpiece out. Maybe not. Might need the spudger after all. Now, one thing some of you are probably wondering is, it'll gross. Does Dave just touch all these nasty vape pins that other people have been sucking on? No, I actually I always hand sanitize or sanitize them before I get here. I might need the other end to be a little stiffer. I think this one might have some glue or something in it. This is definitely much more difficult than most of these we've pulled apart. Ah, there you go. Just took a little force. All right, so we got a little rubber stopper here. Then I'm gonna grab some tweezers and my 24 piece screwdriver kit. Use those to help me pull this out if I can. Guys decided to be difficult. Oh, I agree, Mimi. This is very nasty. <laughs> now this particular pen, I guess I didn't show you the video yet of me harvesting this. Walking here through Champions Gate, Florida. 
Got another vape, another rechargeable. Oh, looks like it's a another special one. All right, it's giving me trouble in that direction. Let's see if we can top it out in the other direction. We'll give uh, the manufacturers of this particular one some credit. It's much better, much better built than most of the other disposables I've seen. This is the part that you normally don't get to see. My pre-recorded videos, me struggling. So I get to cut at least a little bit of that out. Get a little more extreme on this. Fortunately, I don't have my wrench or I'd hit it some. Tell you what, I'm going to keep working on this while I do that. I'm going to give you a real quick video of my scavenging on this camera, and we will be right back. Over here. Looks like there's a camera we're going to grab. We're going to move on. We'll talk about this camera here. This is a Vivitar PZ3115 data print. Now, this is not a digital camera. For those of you who uh, are not as old as I am, this guy here. Has a little latch here. It's actually a film camera. So we'll go to our close up view here. You can see you actually had to load your film in here. There's some contacts to detect if there's film inside. And this one had auto advance, it was an advanced model at the time. It's got a built in flash, auto rangefinder, decent zoom. I actually looked this model up on the internet and I found almost no information about it at all. So this will actually probably be one of the more informative things on the internet about this because it is an older model. So over here on the side, this is the open for the inside. Over here on the other side, there's a button. You push it. There is a CR123 battery. You got Duracell 123. It's a three volt battery. And this one is very dead. Sometimes they're just called camera batteries. You don't see these a whole lot anymore. Sometimes they were used in tactical flashlights. You could stack two of them to get six volts. Uh, for the most part, this kind of battery has been replaced by these or a more common 18650. You can see this is almost exactly half of an 18650. So if you pop two 18650s in, it kind of is a drop-in replacement, even though it's a slightly lower voltage. So what I want to try to do is get this camera to power on. This battery's dead, but we've got this battery out of the vape. So I'm just going to pull the cables out for this battery. So I got a, a brown one and a red one. Now this guy, I'll show you right here, the positive goes towards the bottom, the negative goes towards the top. So theoretically, if we just hook the positive and negative up, we should be able to get this working. Let's see if I can do this right now. I'm looking to see, don't think my mom is watching, so I can strip these wires with my teeth if I have to, but these are thin enough, you can just squeeze them between your nails. The ends come off right there. Positive is going towards the bottom. Let's see if I got enough hands to do this. I'll tell you what I do have. I got this alligator clip. This will make it a little easier. So I only need one hand. Actually, in my last video, I got a comment saying it was impressive how much stuff I carried around. And I mentioned that I needed to carry around a vice, but they're too heavy. So I went ahead and I 3D printed this vice. It's not very heavy. It does have rails where you could screw it down to something but I want it to be really light because I travel with a lot of weight already. So what I'm going to do is take advantage of this vise 
to hold this camera in place. Move this out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. That actually works quite well. So what we're looking at here is right up here at the top. I'm just gonna pull this out. We're gonna disassemble this pretty soon anyway. Uh, is that wide enough? You, you can see in there. So I'm gonna try to latch this wire right onto this. That's our negative. So I'm gonna pull this through. Strip it a little, okay. And on the bottom here, that will not come loose. I tried it earlier. So I'm just going to whoop, make a little smoke. to do on camera okay so both of those look like they're hooked up let's see now I hit the power button on the back of this so we'll turn on oh no it won't because our positive fell off it's gonna hold that in place oh there you, there you go I don't know if you could hear that so this guy turned on you can see it's got a pretty significant zoom for a camera of this age. Uh, the only information I was able to find about this was actually on an eBay listing. Let's say decent zoom, but other than that, not a whole lot we can do with it. I think Walmart may develop film still. Now, here's one other interesting thing I wanted to show you. If we zoom in, if you can see that right there in the middle, there's actually a secondary battery in here that runs the date for the date of print. And that battery is still alive, so we'll try to get to that. And uh, I think the next thing we're going to do is try to take this guy apart. So I'll throw it back here in the clamp. Which is working out quite wisely, or quite wisely, quite well, thanks to uh, a buddy over at TSG for the idea. And we're going to go ahead and grab one of our Phillips drivers. Now this is a... Let's see, does it have a made? Yep, made in China. So there's a chance these aren't Phillips, but are actually Robertson screws, which are the same but different man. And it might take a slightly different driver though. I wouldn't be surprised since these screwdrivers are also made in China. They may be the type, same type of driver. Let's see if this fits in here now. There you go, beautiful. So I'm just gonna take out every screw I can see. All right, Mimi, have fun swimming. <laughs> and, uh, oh, I see there's another comment there from Jordan, too. Let's see if I can cue that up. Oh, send it. There you go. Jordan says, that's cool. Nice work. I've never thought that you could power a camera from a vape battery. Yeah, well, the vape battery is 3.7 volts. This camera battery was three volts, so it's close enough. I was willing to risk it, <laughs> and it worked out well for me. So in the meanwhile, I'm going to keep taking this apart. The backing should pop right off. 
Let's see. We'll pop it open. There may be some hidden screws on the inside here. And there are a couple of hidden screws. This is starting to come apart. I think that may be a smaller size. You know what? I'm going to take this wristband off as well. This is just getting in the way. Show you one cool feature on this wrist strap. Take that down. If you look right here, there's actually a little nub on the end of it that's designed to be able to get in here and hit these little buttons. I thought that was kind of a neat feature on the camera. I'm grabbing a much smaller screwdriver. This one here says it is a 1.2 millimeter. coming. These are spudger. And where's our other spudger? Here's our other spudger. All right, we got that back panel off. All right. Thanks a lot for checking in, Jordan. Came off the back there, you got a good view of our viewfinder. The front slowly coming off. Another screw in here. Ah, there's some retaining clips. Got a circuit board up top with a little display, lots of little wires. Here's our button on the back, a power light, and where we can take that apart next. And now we'll use our smaller screwdriver for these again. Once we see the insides of this, we'll probably call it a night. on the bottom. This is how eventually that film was moving. That hooked up right here to the bottom where the camera or the film went in. That's how everything kind of moves through the camera or how the camera advanced the film. We'll pop those gears out. You never know, we might be able to place those later. Right here in the corner is where the drive motor is. Oh, I got a good view of that drive motor right here. Right here on the side, there's a little switch. And that looks like it's, yep, actuated when the door closes. That's how the camera can tell if the door is open or closed is that little reed switch. It's called a reed because these two little reed switch because these two little reeds connect together. That's kind of cool. We'll take that off. Project I was thinking maybe we'll do in the future 
with the parts of this camera is making a little switch where if uh, somebody walks into your room or triggers the switch, maybe this little read switch, it'll set off the flash and scare them if nothing else. So that comes up here to our control board. A bunch of screws up here. Take off some screws and see what else we can find inside here. Let's see, while I'm working on this, I prepared for you. Make it number four. There you go, there's some interesting facts while we're taking stuff apart. Whole bunch of screws on the front of this as well. Take a couple of these out, see. We can just get this torn apart a little bit more. Give us a good view of the inside. Another one down here. This guy, let's see what he's going to. It's a sensor of some sort, or oh, that's our positive leg. That's coming here to the positive part of the back. purposefully not been damaging as much as I can so that we might be able to hook this back up and have it work even though it's torn apart. Here's the negative lead on our battery. Let's see. Let's try this one more time and See if we can get it to turn on. Now one thing I will warn anyone who, especially if you're younger, don't know a lot about old cameras, right here this flash is powered by a very high voltage, high power capacitor. And if you get that <laughs> powered up and hit yourself with it, it's very unpleasant. Probably not going to kill you, but definitely going to make you not have the best day. Okay, I'll short out this connection. There you go, we're back powered up again. Let's look at the top of this. Here, here's the top. Flash is going to be. Oh. Flash 
Flash is probably already on. Let's see what happens if we push the main button. I just had it in my hand a second ago, but that's okay. We'll just short it out. No, none of those. I'm making it do stuff. We got mode here. Not, probably not going to want to do a whole lot without having to film. Nope. This is interesting. If you look right here, these are probably some test pads. Way to hook up an external programmer or whatever. All right, let's take this down. And put up the next one while I work a little more on taking this apart. Right, there's another screw right here. One more shot, pulling it apart here. Looks like we're all loose. But it's hard to see all the screws hidden under these sometimes. See, they're black. Actually, easier to see on camera. Oops. 
Sorry, folks, if you are leaving messages right now. I don't think I can see them. All right, so here's the underside of that main control circuit board. You can see here, we got a blob. It's probably gonna be our main controller, something custom. This here is our range finder circuitry. So you got infrared LED, a sensor, a couple of lenses on other sensors. What's under here? Well, it looks like we're just covering off a couple of diodes so they don't touch on something else. Unfortunately, I might have to disconnect some of this. Well, maybe we'll just break it out. There you go. Flash needs to get disconnected. Ooh. Okay, I told you it wasn't very pleasant. See any screws in there? Oh, I'm just gonna pull it out as far as we can right now. Let you see there that big old capacitor. And we'll get a reading off the side of it. You know what? I got a video of this. I can see right where that's going. I'm gonna break off this wire so we can get the whole thing out. And we'll short out that capacitor at the same time. Okay. Get this under here so you can see relative to the size of the camera, just how big that guy is. That is 290 volt, 225 microfarad flash capacitor, photo flash. So this is really, this is the big, big prize out of a camera like this. That along with these two low voltage motors. And I think, probably gonna call it at that. Hope you've enjoyed watching. I hope you've learned a little something about old cameras. And I uh, hope you check in next time. Thank you for tuning in. Check out the website, dystopianelectronicsworkshop.com. And uh, now you've seen what's in the camera, you get out there and do something. Walking around this shopping area. Found a little Allen key.